Another one bites the dust. Another hype job bites the dust. And his name is Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez gets dominated by Dimitri Bivol, winning um at best two to three rounds. Uh, Dimitri Bivol, in my personal opinion, won 10 to 2. I could not give Canelo many rounds in this fight. He was getting dominated by Dimitri Bivol because Dimitri Bivol is not a cherry picked fighter like the rest of the fighters that Canelo Alvarez has been fighting. Uh, with little power, little speed, and no boxing ability, okay? Um, Canelo Alvarez was also exposed as a one-trick pony because he kept loading up all the shots going like, hink, 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 trying to um, knock the bigger man and Dimitri Bivol out. And it was obviously wasn't working because Dimitri Bivol took all of Canelo Alvarez's shots and walked through them. In fact, he blocked most of Canelo Alvarez's shots through his impregnable defense, um, blocking the left hook. The uppercut, the right hook, all selection of shots from Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez from round one was having problems with the jab of Dimitri Bivol. The fact that Dimitri Bivol was sticking it in Canelo Alvarez's face so much, throwing it uh, like three times in a row, four times. He was also stiff arming Canelo Alvarez at times throughout the fight, going down to the body with a straight right hand, straight left hand, and um, throwing combinations, you know, flurries of punches. As the fight started to progress, we've seen Canelo Alvarez get more and more tired, start to get worn, wear, wear and tear. His face started to redden up. And uh, we've seen that he got hurt a couple of times by Dimitri Bivol. His legs was um, buckled by Bivol. Okay, uh, Bivol, by the last half of the fight, it seemed like he was really going to stop Canelo Alvarez because he would snap Canelo Alvarez's head back. And like I see, he was hurting Canelo Alvarez badly. Uh, Canelo Alvarez had no answer. He kept trying to, like I said, load up on every shot try and trying to knock uh, Bivol out. But it, it just didn't have no success because he's a one-trick pony. Like, uh, his head movement was good, but he still was getting hit with the one-two, the straight right hand down the pipe. Um, he wouldn't stand in the center of the ring as the fight progressed because he knew he was getting outboxed by Dimitri Bivol. That's why he kept backing up to the ropes, trying to go Bivol and to come at him and looking so frustrated and have his hands down. Uh, Canelo Alvarez is a skilled fighter, but not as skilled as you think he is. Canelo Alvarez is the most overrated hype job in the sport of boxing, all right? This is, this is ridiculous. Um, this is supposed to be the pound for pound fighter, but yet he only has one gear for the entire fight. And this is due to Eddie Reynoso being an overrated trainer also. Eddie Reynoso, and now for, for this year, Three fighters have lost in a row. Julio Cesar Martinez against Chocolatito, all right? We already know what uh, Oscar Valdez got dominated against Shakur Stevenson, and now Dimitri Bivol dominates Oscar Valdez. So what does that say about, um, you know, Eddie Reno as a trainer? He's not that good of a trainer because those fighters, we know what they all have in common. They all have power, most definitely, but they're all flat-footed, have no little, little to no boxing ability, okay? And Canelo Alvarez is another thing why he lost his fight because he had no... Um, he didn't have much hand speed, all right? He had no footwork. Uh, Dimitri Bivol was easily pin, pivoting off the ropes against Canelo Alvarez. Even when Canelo Alvarez would um, get him against the ropes, and he would still block shots, okay? Um, he would stay in the center of the ring. He was bouncing on his toes. Canelo Alvarez sitting there flat-footed, flat trying to fly forward, but instead he's getting pushed back by the bigger Dimitri Bivol. Dimitri Bivol was using his jab, going down to the body, throwing combinations. And like I said, I feel like Dimitri Bivol, if he'd have put... Um, more pressure and um, just went at Canelo Alvarez. He might have stopped Canelo Alvarez because Canelo Alvarez was just sitting there all tired, all gassed out, trying to look for one big shot. It's absolutely embarrassing to see. You want to call this man pound for pound material? That's ridiculous. Canelo Alvarez is not no number one pound for pound fighter. Terrence Crawford is, all right? Terrence Crawford has shown the ability to make the, mo the best adjustments in the sport of boxing, all right? When he was losing against Sean Porter, he didn't quit. He didn't get frustrated. You know what he did? He took his time. Um, he got Sean Porter out of there by taking away what Sean Porter was doing the best, and he outboxed Sean Porter and eventually managed to knock Sean Porter down and out, and his father stopped it, and the rest goes. All right, that's the, the ability to overcome as a fighter. And that's what separates you from a good fighter, from a great fighter. And Canelo Alvarez is not a great fighter. Dimitri Bivol has a possibility of being a great fighter if he beats Arthur Beatbev and becomes undisputed um, versus the winner of Joe Smith versus Arthur Beatbev, okay? That being said, though, Canelo Alvarez, go back to 168 where you belong, man. And even then, you're not beating Jamal Charlo if he's in the right ma mindset. You're not beating Dem Demetrius Andre. You're definitely not beating David Benedictus. David Benedictus is going to bombard Canelo Alvarez with every punch in the book and slaughter Canelo Alvarez. If Dimitri Bivol was able to back Canelo Alvarez up multiple times throughout the fight, especially towards the later half of the fight, what do you think Demetrius, Demetrius Andre, um, Charlo, 
and Benedictus is going to do. Benedictus the most because Benedictus is extremely aggressive. He goes down to the body a lot and um, he throws uppercuts, right hooks, left hooks. He throws 11 punch combinations. This dude has extremely fast hands and he's bigger than Jimmy Chibivo, okay? And I see him stopping Canelo Alvarez in about the 11th, 10th round due to uh, punishment. Canelo Alvarez, if he was getting hurt, by Bevo, he's definitely gonna get hurt by um, the likes of those three fighters. Demetrius Andre is gonna outbox him and dominate him based off his power, his time, and ability, and slickness. Uh, Charlo, if you don't come in here, you know, trying to pity Pat with Canelo, I think he's he can go in there and, and defeat Canelo Alvarez in a competitive fight. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, but he's been exposed as what he is a slow, flat footed fighter who has power, but is over reliant on that power, and is a one trick pony, and has little to no good boxing IQ. All right, he's not, he's not that much better than what. He was when he fought Floyd Mayweather. A four, a four, a almost 40-year-old Floyd Mayweather dominated him. And it clearly shows he hasn't really gotten there better with the exception of his head movement. I already said that Israel Laura beat him. Uh, Gennady Golovkin beat him. Daniel Jacobs was giving him problems. But this is the first fighter to push back Canelo Alvarez and make Canelo Alvarez respect in the ring. So I can definitely salute Dimitri Bivol for that, for being the underdog. When it clearly wasn't the underdog, I predicted in my video that many people were going to uh, underestimate Dimitri Bivol and he might even get robbed. They tried to rob Dimitri Bivol. Uh, they had a 115 to 113, when in reality, it should have been 117 to 110 because Canelo didn't win a single round. He was getting out jabbed, uh, getting beat down, and just had no answers, man. That's another thing about Canelo Alvarez. He struggles with the jab, all right? The jab of Dimitri Bivo was giving Canelo Alvarez so many problems in the ring, and um, he was consistently throwing it. And Dave Bandidas has a great jab, so does Jamal Charlo. If those fighters are able to use their jab, put their combinations together, they're going to beat Canelo Alvarez down, all right? Canelo Alvarez... His counterpunching ability only works when his opponent is standing flat-footed in front of him. And even then, a flat-footed fighter, how will he deal with the size of Benedictus in the ring? Benedictus is so big and so strong and fast and accurate, Canelo Alvarez is not going to look good in there against him. Uh, that being said, though, Canelo Alvarez, like I said, is overrated. His fans have only made him to be unbeatable because he beats subpar competition. You know, his fans can often be, not all of them, but can often be very... Um, radical, fanatical, they just act like a cult of Canelo Alvarez. Um, this is what happens when you keep fighting subpar composition, fighters with no power, no speed. Fighters are not going to give you a challenge in the ring, and then you fight, you find the wrong dude, you go on the wrong European tour, and you find the one European fighter who can destroy you. Uh, that being said, though, this was a very good fight to watch. Um, Undercar was trash, I'm not going to lie. Montana Love versus Gavalev. Galezevs, or whatever his name was, was a horrible fight. I didn't watch the rest of the undercard because I knew it was trash. Uh, the zone, this should have not been on pay-per-view fight. But uh, salute to Dimitri Bouval for putting on a great fight. I hope he can fight Arthur beat bad for um, Undisputed, like I said, because I don't think he actually deserves to give Canelo Alvarez a rematch in the ring because Canelo Alvarez got dominated. And if he fights against Bouval, for a second time, he's getting knocked out because, it, like I said, if Bivol was hurting him and towards the later half of the fight, he's going to knock him out in the second time around. But to wrap this up, this is Nassim the Dream. Rocking says his next to sleep. I'll hot out another one. Peace.